it basically is, and everything is custom designed. And um, we also had sound assets that we made early in the project that wasn't used in a final product. And if you think about how many hours or days would you take to uh, just create the file names for 3,000 files, you know, that, that takes at least a week. You know, um, we, uh, we've used, and I've used uh, Afmod also, Afmod Designer, it's good also. But uh, I started working with Wise after uh, Dead Nation. We actually changed from Afmod to Wise because of the dynamic music formats back then, but now they kind of are similar, but I think still Wise still rules the uh, audio world. And of course, like multiple iterations, it basically means that, let's say uh, we have an alien in the game. The first version of the alien is uh, a bit different than the final version, and it changes like uh, three to four times even in the, uh, from the final product. So it, it takes a lot of time uh, to create the final vision that the designers and uh, director team has it. Also, publisher has to say about the uh, final quality and uh, looks and design of the game. So that also was a factor there. And the original soundtrack. Um, I actually made the first demo in 2015. I didn't work the before. Before that, it's weird. Usually, I start doing some demos before that. Maybe we did some trailers or something like that, just to get in the mood. But the, the music there had hadn't anything to do with the final, final stuff. And it was all only locked in the late uh, 15 when I understood the concept. So it's basically skiffy military melodrama. So this kind of uh, skiffy game with action elements in on it. It sounds a bit Hollywood movie, I hope. <coughs> Let's see. And we uh, decided to go with the three dynamic uh, mood settings. Uh, in uh, Dead Nation, we had um, six different uh, dynamic mood settings, and it was too much. So we wanted to go a bit simpler this time. So the music comes up uh, more, and uh, it, you know, it gives some music a bit more space. And when you have melodies and stuff, it kind of you can hear the melodies going there. So it's basically easy, simple uh, example is that you have like uh, six, uh, three different six minutes tracks that they are always looping uh, from start to end. And uh, they are basically the same track, same tempo, but you know it adds uh, mood in the background. And so we met, I made a lot of music uh, again. I've, I've been working games like this in a long time. Uh, I, I remember Super Stars HD had like almost like our hour of music, and it, it was in 2005, and it was a uh, downloadable game. 2000, uh, sorry, 2007, yes? 2007. But I always believe that uh, if you include a lot of music, it doesn't come repetitive, and you can play the game without getting tired of the music. So um, it will be interesting to hear what the players and reviews are going to say about alienation. It's a bit different, but let's see. So this is the part whether I, be I speak of the challenges. So uh, the biggest challenge was the understanding the concept. You know, if you think about Skiffy action game, yeah, that sounds easy, but um, I didn't have a clear vision of the mood. You know, uh, first uh, creative director Harry Tikkan asked me to do a quite different kind of 80s style of arcade music. And it, it didn't work for me. It didn't work for the overall concept. It was just uh, it, uh, the decision there based on um, feeling that we should have this kind of action music. But then I decided that uh, my first vision that I got the moment I saw the first demo and uh, video of this project, that was the one. I also had bought some <laughs> sample libraries and VSTs for that. So I made the first demo and it suddenly became the style we wanted. And the creative director was really happy. Funny stuff. And um, this was fun. Uh, creating alien voices 
Uh, host market didn't want some casual stuff. We had to create everything from a scratch. And we have like, um, let's say, aliens, six, uh, 10 different aliens maybe, maybe 12, maybe more. And we also had a different kind of variation of those and everything needed to sound like unique. It's, it's not that easy to create unique alien sounds these days for games or films even. But I'm sure we got them right. Thanks, Alex, by the way. And uh, one thing that uh, Creative Director really want, wanted was the weapon sounds, that they need to sound really oomph and boom. And uh, I've never uh, uh, crafted weapon sounds as long as I did for Alienation. And the one reason there is that uh, Alienation has this um, craftable environment where you can craft your weapons and make upgrades. It's uh, not similar like any other games like uh, uh, Housemark has done before. And basically it means that uh, when you upgrade your weapon, the sound is uh, slightly different than before. And not many games has done this before. It's, uh, uh, it was interesting to get uh, the bass sound working right. But then there's also the kind of, uh, when you upgrade something, it needs to sound a bit different, but still the same. So it's a very slight difference. Let's, let's see how it goes. Also, the uh, dynamic music structure, like I said, uh, we did the similar kind of stuff in Dead Nation, and it worked okay in my mind. You know, uh, players liked it, but in a st uh, musical structure, kind of way it didn't bring up the melodies or the mood in the way that I wanted so we actually talked about this many weeks how we should complete the dynamic structure but three tracks for this worked so it was interesting to see that um, we kind of went backwards from Dead Nation on that and also the uh, looping stuff, because we only have three uh, dynamic tracks. So I had to make the tracks very long, like six to eight minutes. So they have uh, lots of um, variations in inside the music track also. That went quite good. <coughs> and um, all right, let's see. Master mix, oh my god. This was hard. Um, I remember crunching Resogun, uh, just playing the game, just mixing it, uh, finding out the uh, volume stuff, mixing buses and uh, hierarchies, how the sounds work. But with Alienation, we had uh, like a double amount of sounds than in Resogun. So um, it took like one month to mix the game. and. It was not only me who mixed the game. It was also Harry Tikkanen, the creative director, who stepped in in a while when my ears were done already. And he was like, yeah, I can continue with this. Then I got it back and started working. Then it goes to back to Harry. So uh, it was an interesting way this time to create. Usually these uh, big, massive projects are handled by uh, at least three or four different people. But um, in this project we had me, I was doing the music and uh, producing sounds, also do doing the sound design and voice editing. And we had Alex who did uh, most of the sounds. And in the middle of the project we had a guy who left the company, he was kind of producing the audio side. And that w because of that uh, we, had a quite we had to rebuild the uh, asset list and everything it took like one month to get back on track so as big as project as this it kind of really it's important to have a people who have worked from start to to the end of the project so uh, there would not be like this kind of issues there but we made it right and of course sony sony gave some extra time to final finalist game so that was quite nice but it wasn't due to the audio side, but the overall uh, game, gaming experience. So, uh, now that we have some time left, I could speak anything I want here, 
but I'm most interested to hear about your questions because uh, it's hard for me to create the kind of lecture that has everything covered. If anyone wants to ask about the guy who makes music and audio. All right, I can I can give you my mic. Basically, I believe uh, it was the game Titanfall that had around 50 gigabyte download in total, and a lot of that because was because they used uncompressed audio files. I think that added a, a lot of weight to it. If you have uh, over 3,000 sounds in total for this game, how much that does that add to the total weight of the game? We actually use OG formats, and it, it's the for me it's the best format that compresses the files really good. Even in the lowest settings, it sounds really good, and it's different than MP3, what makes uh, a little clips in the beginning and at the end. But um, I think the amount of audio stuff that requires space is not that much. It's I would say five percent of the game total because the OG compression is so good. And when we started doing a uh, project with Wise, they, you know, OG uses, Wise uses OG really, really good, and the compression is good, sound is good. And there, there's never been issues with the uh, <laughs> computing power or anything memory related stuff. It, you know, Wise has handled it very smoothly. And I would really recommend any audio coders, designers, audio guys to learn wise and also fmod they have things going really right more questions please if no questions i start talking about our my trip here no it was good <coughs> anyway i can start uh, talking about audio branding it's something uh, we always do with our games it it basically means that uh, with whatever concept, whatever game, uh, we we start uh, inventing new kind of sound, new kind of way to make these projects memorable. Usually, it uh, starts from music, of course, like Angry Birds theme. You know, everybody knows, <laughs> you know, four notes, and everybody's like, "Yay, I know this too." And uh, but also uh, sound design. Uh, let's say, well, easy example again, Angry Birds. Uh, Overall sounds were like casual and stuff. And then I wanted to create something unique with the bird and pig sounds. And uh, to make it great, you need to sometimes have some fun. So um, in this case, um, I called Rovio that uh, I can record the sounds with you guys. They are like, no way. We are not sound actors. But I recommended doing that. Because we got unique sounds and uh, different kind, you know, uh, enthusiastic actors who never done anything, but after three or four beers, you know, it's like karaoke. And I would recommend everybody doing like this um, in-game vocals if they are not speech vocals yourself. Like, um, let's say uh, you have a dying man there, you know, soldiers, hit sounds, death sounds everything like that but if you're talking about mobile games of course you're gonna have funny sounds don't look the sounds from the internet do it yourself everything that you can record please do it yourself you know it doesn't require this uh, long-term audio designer to do that it only requires a designer who has the vision and some beer well also something else maybe <laughs> but um, also about the audio branding is that it needs to hold out as many years as possible and uh, you can create adapters uh, from, the, from the music, you can create remixes and uh, the important thing is that you have to make, the make it repeat and let's say Star Wars movies, um, they always use the, <laughs> of course they use the same theme which is awesome and when you see anything related to Star Wars, uh, you can 
instantly see that okay this is Star Wars like the Rogue One trailer that mostly everybody here probably seen maybe somebody they had this Star Wars themed piano track playing there and that you know that made it Star Wars even though it wasn't the classical orchestration made by John Williams same it's the same with the games like Angry Birds there's uh, multiple like uh, hundreds maybe different versions of the main film but it's always uh, the adaptation is different uh, but in alienation um, it's gonna be interesting to see how the people are gonna get my view of the sci-fi action genre and uh, I tried to make it not so um, propaganda as in hell divers I, I went to this um, more neutral worldview <laughs> if you can say that this kind of um, style and it's it's about mankind versus the aliens not not kind of this awesome uh, corporate or some uh, uh, some some bigger you know organizations fighting against them but you know this neutral uh, militaristic view that that's the thing why it was so hard for me to understand the concept because there wasn't any any main characters that had like these awesome stories behind them or you know I, I knew what the world was but it was difficult to grasp about the concept of the feeling and the emotions that I needed to convey through the music and uh, actually that's very important when designing games you need to have at least the kind of mood track even if you take um, references from movies other games music it's it's really important and it's usually forgotten by many people that you need to have the mood track that the artist ha have their uh, visions from even though it's it's not quite there, but um, how many of you work with some kind of uh, reference music or music related to your job? At least music that soothes your soul when you're doing some something. You know, you get your mood there. Yes, quite many people. So um, this is for the artists. You know, uh, uh, it's easy to forget. It's easy to put aside and not many people even get it like uh, let's say a smaller mobile mobile stuff I work with quite many many mobile stuff and I Aritunes also works with uh, <coughs> Ray and Puff money game companies in Finland and it's been funny to uh, say to them that they need to start doing some references because they're just doing money games and now they're upgrading their games to have a soul. So money games with the soul. Oh man, sounds like a super show product. <coughs> anyway, please questions anything. We have three minutes left. Here is a question straight out of Romania. Our composer is asking, what's one of the games that he thinks nailed the sound design overall if he can think of anything memorable? that really stuck out any, game out. any games yeah um, I'm a gamer myself I, I played since uh, Atari days you know I just remember when I watched the Netflix document that I actually had Atari so <coughs> for the games I remember always the games that had the great music like the music that really uh, fitted to the game fitted to the emotions and feelings of the game <coughs> You know, they, they stay struck to me first, like uh, <coughs> Warcraft games and the kind of Turrigan 2 and uh, Monkey Island games. Of course, they had great story and <coughs> stuff like that, but usually it's it's the music. Like like with the mu movies, it, it's, it's even a music or sound design that's so great that uh, it's unique. <coughs> and I would recommend everybody who is doing music or audio just think of something unique it doesn't need to be the whole soundtrack doesn't need to be the whole sound design but there should be some unique stuff going on 
And that's why I'm recommending everybody trying to do voiceovers to themselves. <coughs> Not like sp spoken voiceovers, but voiceover, uh, what's it called? Um, you know, uh, you know, hit sounds, foley. Well, foley sounds, yeah. You know, if you, everybody can be a pig, like, <laughs> you know, it's very easy. Uh, you have to just invent some kind of real life uh, reference for it. For let's say Angry Birds pigs, there was they, they were like um, human versions of pigs. So fat bankers who are laughing at poor customer who's bringing money to the bank, and they're like, <laughs> and also the birds, really easy ones. <sighs> you know what kind of sounds would humans make if they would do bird sounds, basically. <coughs> Damn, I need to drink. <coughs> oh. Anyway, more questions, please. Hello. Uh, so, uh, can I ask two questions? Uh, so, first question is, you, you mentioned uh, uh, Monkey Island and a couple other games, uh, but maybe you have like your one of your like favorite sa game soundtracks. Yes, I do have my favorite soundtracks. Uh, let's say Monkey Island, very great. Also, Warcraft games, everything Blizzard has done, very awesome. My, uh, I got my first really good sound card when Warcraft 2 came out, and it sounded so awesome. You know, first hearing the melodies and you know in a MIDI format, I even it was. You know, MIDI back then, but you know, how many of you have bought a sound card, like in the back old days? You know, you you know how it uh, changed the MIDI music. So you were like, oh, this is so awesome. At least I can hear it right now. Really great. But now, uh, usually music is not done by MIDI. It's it's basically as good as you can do it. So uh, the you new gamers don't have that experience of upgrading your sound card. By the way, Alex is starting soon. Any more questions? Uh, I had the other question. Okay, yes. Wait, uh, so Alienation had a bunch of like sci-fi sound effects. And I remember watching this one video where they were making these alien sounds with uh, dry eyes for one of this Transformers movie. Did, did you have like any interesting ways you made some sound effects or were you s synthesizing some of them while with software or...? Alex is starting soon. This is a question you need to ask from him. Oh. He's the sound designer god. Just, just one mi more. Then Alex. Um, hello, I... Hello, I have a more technical question. What software do you use to produce sound and your music? Well, I use, uh, for sounds, I use Acid Pro. It's it's funny that it how it stayed with me, and you know, Sony SoundForge. And uh, recording, I have quite many different systems, but I'm not that into sounds anymore. I'm, I'm doing more producing and music side. But for music, uh, it's also Acid Pro. I'm, I'm mixing all the stuff I m make in Cubase. I'm composing everything in Cubase and uh, rendering the valves there and, you know, I like to see the music tra in tracks in uh, audio format, so I can see them. So I don't mix in Cubase. So um, those are the most used programs I use. But I also use uh, quite many variations of different VST samplers and stuff like that. And uh, y usually when I start a new project, I, I get myself a new VST samplers and go from that. But now, Thanks for um, watching my lecture. Usually I do a bit more time than 30 minutes, but I hope I got your interested about music and audio. Okay, thanks, sorry.